Hey guys, welcome back. This is a quick little presentation talking about which deep inversion is best. So I'll be showcasing the main distributions that offer the desktop environment as a flavor, and I'll be talking about the pros and cons of each distribution. So the distros that feature the, de the deep and desktop environment are, of course, deep in itself. Then there's Fedora, and for the Arch-based ones, it's Arch, Manjaro, Antergos, and Arco Linux. Now for Deepin itself, what I would say is that it definitely has the most polished look and feel uh, in comparison to the other distros that I'll be talking about. And of course the reason being is because the desktop environment and the distribution itself, it all goes hand in hand into one. Uh, there's the nice installer. It's, um, it's a very straightforward installer. It's well presented, but one thing that I actually forgot to add on to the cons list is the fact that it has um, a end user license agreement. So if you don't want that type of stuff, if you don't want to agree to that type of stuff, um, it's something to certainly keep into consideration before trying out Deepin. Uh, but as a whole, it is a straightforward and beginner-friendly experience. Uh, when it comes to updating the system and just dealing with the system, it's really a hassle-free experience. Um, but there are some really big cons though that would make me not typically recommend Deepin. The reason why I wouldn't recommend Deepin itself, and I would recommend trying something that, that offers, and I would try to recommend something that offers the desktop environment instead, uh, is mainly because, uh, I mean, the packages are really outdated. Even though the store looks very nice, uh, and even though it has the uh, deep in store and other native deep in applications that work just fine. Uh, I would recommend using something else because these packages, they're just, if you take a look at the store, uh, despite the nice presentation of every application, it doesn't matter because you're going to be using the application more so than just looking at it at the store. So, what's the point when the applications, e even the most popular ones such as web browsers are a couple versions behind. So that's the biggest con for sure. And I have noticed that it is, it does tend to be more resource intensive, even though it's the same desktop environment, it does tend to use more uh, RAM in comparison to other, especially Arch based derivatives. Those ones tend to be more lightweight. Another thing that really sucks is the fact that you can't really even try it. In order to try it, you basically have to first install it. So uh, that's not really good. They really have to add an option where you could just try it first uh, on the live system. And then if you actually like it, you can go ahead and click on the installer. But that's really another con. And then the boot splash is nice. Again, it kind of goes into the whole polished look and feel like I was saying. But the thing is, is that uh, the logo, it has one on the startup and the shutdown as well, so during the shutdown, it does kind of slow down the shutdown, so there's really no point in having a boot splash logo during the shutdown sequence, so that's just one thing, but, but those are the main pros and cons. Now when it comes to Fedora, uh, Fedora, Fedora 30 recently just released, and it now offers the deep and desktop environment, so Fedora as a whole... It tends to be stable and secure. Uh, I've tried out Deepin on it. The integration is pretty good, and it does use the latest version, or at least the latest stable version, because you have to keep in mind that uh, when it comes to Deepin and the, the updates, uh, a lot of updates tend to introduce new bugs, and a lot of old bugs tend to stick around for a while. So when it comes to the desktop environment itself, you can't really blame the distribution. Um, because when there's bugs pertaining to the desktop, it kind of it, it's kind of a deepened type thing where they need to fix it. Um, although sometimes there are bugs that appear specifically to deepen and, and others appear uh, in Arch-based systems. So it's kind of interesting when it comes to that. But overall, it's a good experience. The install is minimal. And what I mean by that is the amount of programs that are installed, there's not all that many programs installed by default, so it's not really bloated or anything. Uh, but yeah, so, but the main cons, in my opinion, is that initially when I went to the Fedora website, it was kind of hard to find uh, the 
installer. I didn't know what exactly I had to install in order to get Fedora or to get Fedora deepened. But apparently I had to uh, get the Fedora workstation and install it from there. And of course, because Deepin's installer is nice, this isn't a con that necessarily pertains only to Fedora. <coughs> it's also for the other ones as well. But the installer just... Deepin does have the best uh, and most polished installer, in my opinion. And also another, another thing to keep in mind are the commands. So it's Fedora is basically its own thing, so it doesn't use... Um, like Arch, for example, like Pac-Man, or uh, like something like Ubuntu doesn't use sudo apt install. Uh, so you're going to have to kind of, if you have never used Fedora before, you're going to have to learn that first when it comes to using the terminal and all those types of commands. Now for Arch itself, well, what can I say? It's a rolling release, meaning uh, you don't have to, it constantly updates and when it comes to the bleeding edge software, it provides the latest versions of each uh, piece of software. Uh, so it, it's good. Like that's a pro and a con, honestly, because it's nice when it's when you have a rolling release system where you don't have to um, update to a whole new version. It's just constantly updating, and you're constantly getting the new uh, and latest packages and whatnot. But it's also very lightweight and fast. I did try Antec Designs Arch Deepen, and it was very, it was a very good experience. Uh, even though, like I said, the desktop environment was the same, the resources were um, much lower for sure. And when everything works, it is a great experience. But bugs can occur because you're using the latest software, so uh, you do have to take that into consideration. And also, updates can break the system. Although, even if something goes wrong, there's great documentation on the Arch Wiki, so uh, you're oftentimes going to be pointed to in that direction to read the wiki and the documentation uh, before going and asking people for help. So, But it does provide great documentation, so usually if you have an error, it's going to have the solution, basically. Now, when it comes to the cons, of course, there's this whole thing going on about Arch that it's kind of a hassle to install. And like I mentioned, Antec Designs version Arch Deepen, the installer is easier and it's more straightforward, so that's not as big of a deal. But um, I personally would say that Arch as a whole isn't as stable, of course, due to having these uh, bugs being introduced because you're using the latest software so uh, there's not as much testing going on so if you want deepen like if you want to use it as a desktop environment and you want a distro for your main workstation then arch probably isn't the best decision to go with because if you have sensitive information or whatever uh, then it could break an update could break on you and then you'll have to go with um, you'll have a hassle to go through uh, to fix it so yeah and the whole different bugs compared to deep in itself i kind of talked about that already uh, and yeah it, it just it, in general requires more user maintenance and experience and especially also if you have the arch user repositories enabled which i actually mentioned in the manjaro slide so let's see here okay so manjaro is next so i'll talk about that in a little bit manjaro is a great experience um, it's very stable, and at least in my opinion, in my case, uh, I'm still using Manjaro. I've been using Manjaro, although I'm using Manjaro KDE. Uh, it tends to be a very stable experience as a whole. Uh, the installer, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Again, any Arch-based derivative is fast and lightweight when it comes to using the deep and desktop environment. Um, and it does, at least in my experience, it's more stable than Arch. And the forum, uh, the community is very good in my opinion. It's very friendly. And I've been using the forum and the people there. Every time you have a question, they, they tend to be very responsive and very helpful. Uh, but the cons, uh, for some reason, it's not a, a great experience for everyone. Some people can't get to install it even. Other people uh, just have it break on them often. And I'm not sure why, but it 
it's inconsistent. If you take a look at Distro, uh, Distro Watch as well, uh, it de definitely has mixed feelings in regard to that. And just like with Arch, it may break sometimes on updates. I've only had it break on me once, and that was a couple months ago. I forgot why necessarily, but that's something to take into consideration as well. And also the extra maintenance if the Arch user repository is enabled. Uh, I do recommend taking a look into that, how to use it properly, and just reading into it. But if you do use that, then you're probably going to need a Arch user repository Arch user repository helper, AUR helper, uh, such as Yay. So you could just use that and update your packages through that and whatnot. Antergos, I haven't had much experience experience with it, and I'll say that uh, in a little bit. But it's similar to Manjaro. Again, the experience as a whole, once you have the system installed, it's basically very similar. Again, it, it's like Arch as well. I mean, they're all very similar. It's just when it comes to the repositories and whatnot, uh, they use their own repositories. And But yeah, the experience is very similar. It's just that the main difference is, is that the installer is not good. Like, it's, it's a terrible installer, actually, in my opinion. I've tried installing this system. I only managed to install like once out of maybe five, six times. It's just, I don't know if they fixed it. Hopefully they did. I haven't tried installing it in quite a while. But I mean, the installer, it just crashes towards the end or freezes. I forgot what happened, uh, but it's definitely not a good experience. Um, but I did try it. Oh, I actually installed it twice. Once on a real machine, the second time on a virtual machine. That was more recent. That was like maybe two months ago. It did work. So maybe they fixed their installer. Uh, but one thing I did notice, this may not be a con for everybody, but in my opinion it is because it uses some weird looking login manager and it just doesn't look as polished. It doesn't look as, uh, as nice as the actual Deepin login manager. So that's something to consider. And then same thing with Arco. Uh, with all these Arch-based derivatives, they the experience definitely feels very similar. But this one's pretty un unique because it has a ton of pre-installed themes. When it comes to icon themes or cursor themes or the GK themes, it's packed. And the it has a lot of pre-installed applications. Uh, so that's good. I mean, if you have specific needs or specific programs that you want, it's always good to just have them installed instead of having to go through the hassle of installing them yourself. And I mean, I think I've, I have used Arco Linux in the past. It was lightweight and fast for me. I don't know if it still is. Uh, I haven't tried the deep inversion. Um, well, I tried it in a virtual machine, but I've never actually installed it. So uh, but it it was the XFCE version that I've used. It was fast and lightweight. Now its biggest pro can be its biggest con as well. It, this all depends on what you're looking for, of course. And if you're looking for something more minimalistic, more uh, just less programs, less themes, then this probably isn't for you because it just has too many. And if if you especially the types of the way the settings looks where you have to scroll down to go into the next settings and whatnot. Uh, if you take a look at the theming, if you want to apply or change your theme or whatever, then you're going to have to scroll quite a while because there's just so many themes installed and it could be considered as bloated because, uh, I think last time I remember, um, there was like, there was three browsers installed, and some people may think that that's just too much, that that's unnecessary. So, um, yeah, it definitely has a lot of programs that some users may think are in excess and uh, unnecessary. And just like with um, Antergos, it uses a different login manager. And actually, one pro that I forgot to mention is that Eric himself, uh, the creator of Arco Linux, he posts a lot of tutorials and videos uh, pertaining to Arco Linux. So if you have any questions or if you're curious about something, you can always go to his YouTube channel 
and just take a look at his videos and you might find something helpful so uh, that's a pro that i missed but yeah overall it's nice but maybe a bit too much so in conclusion this may seem vague but i've listed the pros and cons uh, and uh, my experiences with some of these distros so based off of what you've heard you can kind of make your own informed decision into thinking or into choosing which version you might think or which distro is best for you uh, but me personally what would i recommend i would of course recommend manjaro deepen simply because my personal experience it was just manjaro is just very stable for me uh, but of course if if arch based distributions just tend to not be stable for you then try deepen itself or uh, i would actually recommend fedora deepen over deepen itself because again i just i can't real i can't really recommend deepen because of the um outdated packages so uh, my top two recommendations if you want something arch based just go with manjaro because in my opinion it it's the most hassle-free. It's not too bloated or not too minimalistic. And it, like I said, in my experience, it tends to be stable. And also the community is really nice. So if you have any questions, you'll definitely have your solution. And when it comes to Fedora, it's also very stable uh, and secure. So I'd probably recommend those two. So that was basically it. Let me know which version you use or which version you would consider using. Uh, and yeah, that was basically it. Hopefully this video was helpful. And yeah, thanks for watching.